Hello and welcome to this video. And this video is going to be called, Is This The Greatest Jazz Rock Album Ever Made? Right? Or it could be called, Is This The Greatest Progressive Rock Album any, Ever Made? I made a video, um, just a few minutes ago actually, where um, I went through 10 really obscure and forgotten jazz rock albums, right? When I was researching into this, I found this album, right? By Herman Svabel, oh, by Herman Svabel, right? And he brought an album out in 1977 called Svabel, okay? Now, um, this album is mind-blowing and there's a really incredible story attached to it. So what you're gonna see is the extract from the video I just shot but with this little introduction tagged on so it makes sense because I really think that this story should be told separately and hopefully I will be able to raise the awareness of this incredible artist. So here we go, here's my little revelation that happened to me when I first heard this album and the surprise when I started to research about this guy. So um, I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you on the next video. So, I'm about to tell you the story of one of the most interesting music musicians in jazz, rock, prog, whatever you want to call it, right? A musician that is shrouded in mystery. Okay, so, the musician in question is a guy called Herman Svebel, right? Who was born in 1958 and he brought one album out in 1977 called Svebel, right? And this album is bonkers, right? I'm going to play you a couple, like a sort of little bits from the album, just a few bits here and there. Now, this album was made when Herman was 17 or 18 years old, right? And I'm going to tell you the background to this. Jazz rock and prog fans, put your seatbelts on. You will never heard anything like this. So this is Svebel by Herman Svebel from 1977. Now hopefully you've had the same reaction as me when I came across this album, which was only a few weeks ago. And I put it on, I just could not believe what I was hearing, right? So I thought, I've got to find out about this guy. This is one of the strangest stories in jazz, rock, prom, or contemporary music. This is bizarre, right? So, as I said, Herman Savell was born in 1958 in Vienna, Austria, right? Now, I've pulled this information off the internet from a number of sources. Right? I'm going to have to read it because I don't know this. So, as you know, normally this stuff comes off the top of my head. But this story is so strange that I want to get the facts in here. Right? So, he was born in Austria in 1958 and his mother was called Sonia Svabel. Right? Sonia Svabel's um, little brother was Bill Graham. Now, Bill Graham was a concert promoter that did stuff with Santana, with the Grateful Dead, with Miles Davis, and he was the guy that put on all those incredible gigs at the Fillmore. When you see those Miles Davis albums, Bill Graham was one of the guys that took Miles and put him into a rock setting. So Bill Graham is really important for the history of jazz rock. But Bill Graham's over in the States. Herman is in Austria. So at the age of 16, right, he decides to go to America. Now, why does he go to America? Because at the age of six, he started playing piano 
had classical training and it became apparent that this guy was a child prodigy, right? Um, he was really into Chopin, he was really into Keith Jarrett, um, he was really into Frank Zappa, I think. You must have been listening to this album, right? Um, with this sort of virtuosity was a very strange sort of almost like narcissistic character, I think, from what I've read, really between the lines. He seemed very confident with himself. He really believed that he was great and he was, he was very, in the early days, very forward in pushing himself. So at 16 years old, he gets on a plane and he goes to New York. A very similar story to the story of Jaco Pastorius. And it's interesting when we plot the story of this guy. So, he arrives in America. He's in New York. He's trying to make it. He's got a compositions under his arm. He's 16 years old. He's got some contacts with Bill Graham. He winds up walking into Roberta Flack's recording session for Feel Like Making Love, that album. He's around about 1974. He's a very young man. He walks into that studio and he walks up to the band and Roberta Flack and says, I am the greatest pianist in the world. They all burst out laughing. They go, prove it. So he sits down and plays piano and the band and Roberta Flack stand there open mouth looking at this little kid who is apparently the greatest pianist in the world. He's got classical down, avant-garde, jazz rock, jazz, and he's got a fistful of compositions. With Roberta Flack behind him and Bill Graham, he signs a deal with Arista. This is a major deal, and he makes this album in 1977. This album is a, just seems to do everything on it. It's incredibly virtuoso. His, his piano playing is unbelievable. It doesn't sound like anybody at all. He's got his own sound. The musicianship is, is just bonkers on here. Um, the, the musicians on this album is um, Michael Viscaglia on bass, never heard of him. Bob Goldman on drums, never heard of him. But we do have Dave Samuels on marimba and vibraphone, who is a classic uh, musician of jazz rock. And Vadim Viadro on tenor, sax, clarinet and flute. Right, you've heard this album and I'm sure you're running to have a good listen to it. It's bonkers. Right, came out on Arista Records, it made a label and it absolutely flopped. Right, Herman then goes back into the studio to start working on the next album and at this point he seems to have had a nervous breakdown or something happened. There's an argument with the musicians in the group and at this point he disappears. He absolutely disappears. Right, Nobody knows where he is. There's a, there's a rumour he's living in um, San Francisco and he's keeping dogs and smoking a ton of marijuana. Right. But people lose touch with him. His mother eventually um, registers him as a missing person, I think in 2002. So this guy absolutely disappears off the planet. This is one of the most bizarre stories in jazz rock I've ever come across. This absolute, you know, monster of jazz rock. One of the, apparently one of the greatest musicians. At 18 years old making an album like this. What would he have gone on to do? This is, this is mind blowing. Makes that one album. Nobody buys it, the album falls into obscurity and he disappears off the planet, right? Now you'd think that would be um, the, the end of the story, but there's a twist to this which is absolutely incredible. So um, his mom files for a missing persons report in 2002. Um, nobody knows where he is. Now, there's a Polish filmmaker called Katarzyna I'm going to have to read this, Katarzyna Kozira. I'll say that again, probably pronounce it wrong. Katarzyna Kozira. She's a Polish artist and a filmmaker and she's very interested in a psychological affliction called the Jerusalem, syn the Jerusalem Syndrome. God, there's too many big words in this video. Right, the Jerusalem Syndrome is a sort of mental illness where people visit Jerusalem, they're completely um, okay, you know, complementous, and as soon as they reach that town, they become psychotic, often believing that Jesus Christ is coming, or they are Jesus, or they are being controlled by forces beyond themselves, right? And this happens a lot in Jerusalem. So she goes in 2012 to make a film in Jerusalem exploring the Jerusalem syndrome, and she um, ends up interviewing this guy that's living on the streets, um, drinking rainwater, 
eating whatever food he can get. He still says that he's an artist, right? And he has gone there and he is suffering with this thing called Jerusalem Syndrome. Um, this could well be Herman's Fabel. It's not time for me to show up or on the screen right now, but I will. I mean, I am a light. I mean, like she just said to me, you are a light and the salt of the world. Mm -hmm. Right. He, he agrees to do an interview and uh, when he does the interview, um, he will not allow his face to be um, seen. Now, I've tried to find out what I can about this film. And I have found on Vimeo a, a, a short extract from the film. And there is a guy on there who's talking about um, uh, the fact that he's disappeared from view and it's not ready for him to come back into view. And uh, his face is hidden, it's just his arms. But from what you can see, he looks like a younger man than Herman would have been at this age. Herman would have been in 2012, around about 50, I suppose. Early 50s. Uh, and it doesn't look like that. This is this is just a big mystery, and I have told you everything that I know, everything that I have been able to find out about this guy. But I do believe this is one of the greatest um, jazz rock and prog albums ever made. Uh, there's parts on it which compositionally sound like Frank Zappa, but they're even more out there. They're, this is bonkers. His piano playing's incredible. The soloing is incredible. The band's incredible as well. And um, when people make virtuoso albums, it often has this sort of tight sound of musicians really concentrating, trying to make sure they nail everything. This album does that, that, that sound, it's loose. It's, 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 um, you can hear sort of the room, especially on the saxophone, you can hear the room. I love the way it's recorded. I love the sound of it. This has just suddenly become one of my favorite albums of all time. And it's on Spotify. So you can go and listen to it right now. And when you get there and look up Herman Svabel on there, I think at the moment he has 23 listeners a month. Right, so hopefully this video will up those listeners. So come on, guys, get over to Spotify and listen to this album. And if I can get the people here in this album and I can see the listeners go up to Spotify, I will come back and report more. And I might even be able to find out a little bit more about Herman. Herman, if you're watching this, right, that album is unbelievable, right? You're an incredible musician, right? And I'm sure there's a lot of people, when I say a lot of people, there are people out here that do really appreciate what you do and we would love to know what you're up to. But, you know, he has his reasons. He has disappeared from the mainstream. Probably the best idea. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy it, please like because it helps the algorithm and I need my algorithm to be helped at all times by you. Um, if you want to see some more, you can subscribe and you can ring the notification bell and it will tell you when I'm bringing a video out. I tend to bring out at least three videos a week. Last week I actually brought out seven. Seven, one every single day, right? Um, if you want to support me doing this, uh, then please become a Patreon. And at the moment, if you visit my Patreon, you will get seven days for free. So you could check it out and see whether you like it. And I'm sure you will like it. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.